It has been stated that some studies relating Mediterranean diet and coronary heart disease have, as you said, a defect <coughs> because they also include heart failure coexisting, coexisting, not independently, with coronary heart disease. I may say at this point <coughs> that from the clinical point of view at least, uh, this is not a weakness, it's not a defect, because heart failure on the basis of coronary heart disease is a, is a result and not of coronary heart disease and not a coexistence. We know that very well today that the cardiologists, due to a lot of therapeutic machinery, do not let us die from coronary heart disease unless the death is sudden. Uh, the, results, the, the result is that endly, the myocardium through very long time weakens, leading finally to, current, to heart failure. So according to my opinion, this is not a defect. And secondly, if I may not speak very long, yeah. as it concerns nuts and cognition, I would like to note that perhaps uh, the lack of positive relation in humans might be due to the lack of long-term studies. The usual dementia is a very long progressive phenomenon. In addition, I may ask you to spell in Catalan. Uh, uh, are the walnuts in your country expensive? If yes, it might be that socioeconomic differences might be a conflicting factor for such studies. Thank you. In relation to the, in relation to the first uh, opinion, uh, the problem is that in some, in one, if I remember one or two, of the meta-analysis, they have they they mixed mortality, mortality, and they say mortality by coronary heart disease, and they put also together mortality by uh, heart failure so mixture. But but uh, but you can death by heart failure without coronary heart disease. So I think it is necessary to, uh, to, to analyze these two endpoints separately. And it's for this that we have done this after, uh, after uh, analyzing the literature. An another physiopathology. An but if they coexist with coronary heart disease. They can coexist, but I think we, if you analyze coron mortality by coronary heart disease, you can in cannot include yeah. heart failure. Thank you. I respect you, although you don't persuade me. I would like to. Thanks uh, for your comment. I agree with you 100% that uh, the studies that have been conducted so far are short. And the issues of cognition, especially among the elderly, is an issue that takes time. And uh, there is a need uh, for further studies. One thing is the length. Another thing also is the sample size. Uh, any study that uh, have a small sample size, uh, such as the ones that we did with Waha, uh, although is very time consuming and very costly, 700 subjects uh, with so many other covariates that may vary, I mean, is probably very tight. And uh, studies with 7,000 subjects and said two years, seven years, I mean, probably could give more definite results. I agree with you uh, entirely uh, on your opinion. Yes? And the cost of the uh, The issue of the, um, that you said as far as socioeconomic status, 
is true. That is, is a confounding factor, in, in not only in cognition, in many other issues. Um, as far as the studies that we are considering, since it's a randomized clinical trials, and the notes were given free of charge, uh, I don't think the socioeconomic status had an impact on the results of this study. But in general, in descriptive studies, yes, socioeconomic status is a confounding factor. I agree with you. Thank you very much. Uh, Tom Oliver from Toronto. I'd like to ask Professor Ortiz about uh, that study he did, the nice one with the almonds and the glucose tolerance. You just showed, and I understand it was a parallel design trial, is that correct? You just showed um, two curves, one for one group and one for the other, and um, I wasn't convinced that these groups were the same at the start. I mean, do you, I mean, been, would have wanted to see the changes and see the changes across the periods, and presumably you have that. Yes, yeah, so you're talking about the, the baseline, where they started at baseline? So you showed the glucose responses in the uh, almond group was less, and insulin less than in the other group. Correct. So, yeah. so but these were different people, and, and were the groups the same? Oh, so yeah. Gave, no, so, at the beginning. Yeah, no, so, so um, the, the two study groups, you know, one was on a controlled diet, uh, and um, of course then the almond um, uh, supplemented uh, diet. But when, they, they, when we did the GTTs at the end of the, the study, um, we, we uh, corrected for uh, baseline so that the curves are corrected for that. I don't know if that answered your question. Did you up. See the start as well? No, no, it was o only at the end. Yeah. But we did uh, HOMA calculations at, at the beginning of the study, um, just from uh, overnight fasting um, blood draws, but we didn't do full GTTs at the beginning, just at the end. Vlad uh, and Throat. I have just a quick one. Uh, Dario, Dario mentioned in his high-rated speech, uh, George Orwell, and I read him. And I remember that he also said something like, not all nuts are created equal. I think that's what he said. So what three independent Catalans think about nuts, and I want to be more specific, because Jordi, when he had a couple of beers, he told me that you use uh, Californian almonds. So what would be outcome if you use ordinary Mediterranean almonds? <laughs> both. It's both. I think the sorry, I think the food the composition of nuts are very similar. And especially when we talk about almonds. There are very few differences, perhaps, in some antioxidants, polyphenols, the amount of some polyphenols, etc. But at the end, I think we are talking about the same. Uh, in case of hazelnuts or walnuts, or there are some other differences. For example, walnuts are very are more rich in poly, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids than the other nuts, and also have uh, higher amounts of alpha linolenic acid. Uh, there are some differences in polyphenols also, but at the end, are, I think that are very similar all the all the nuts, and also peanuts that are, as you know, is not a typical tree nut because it's a leguminous. The, 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 the composition the, of, of the, the peanuts are very similar of the rest. Uh, Jim, please. Julia, I wonder if you would like to comment just a little bit more on the difference between stroke and coronary heart disease in pretty men, perhaps the others would be too. It's, it's really very striking, uh, I mean, given the comparability of risk factors, that um, there's that difference. Um, so maybe others would like to comment on the epidemiology as well as the clinical trials. Sorry, but I do not understand. Sorry, the you, you showed course. very clearly in PREDIMED a reduction in coronary heart disease, but not in stroke. So what so we have no, you to speculate as the, to the, the primary endpoint of PREDIMED is a composite yeah. of 
card of myocardial infarction, stroke, and mortality by these causes. So um, I think it's important to say that this is the primary endpoint, and the design of the study has been in order to look at this endpoint. The other endpoints are secondary endpoints. When we have observed, for example, beneficial effects on stroke in case of NADS and not in case of myocardial infarction. But what is important, I think, that is powered especially for the endpoint that we have uh, hypothesized at, at this, at the, uh, uh, as a primary endpoint in, in, in PREDIMED. And the rest, what we have observed, uh, is some uh, beneficial effects on some sec secondary endpoints, such as stroke or diabetes or uh, other secondary endpoints. Okay. If I if I may interject, I think this is a comment. I don't want to put as as a question, but if I follow your presentation, it seems like based on observational studies, uh, there is in general. Uh, a stronger connection between knots and coronary heart disease than it is with a stroke. However, in the PREDIMED, that for better or for worse is the best that we have as far as an intervention trial, uh, the thing seems to go in the opposite direction. In other words, that there is more protection for a stroke than for coronary heart disease. So this is a reality that I don't know if uh, anybody is going to uh, have an opinion, but I mean, I'm just making the question because I do not have uh, an easy answer to this. And that is probably what uh, he was trying to, to relate. Could you uh, refresh our memories about the end, the number of subjects that had MI, the number of subjects that had stroke? On the PREDIMED, you say? On the PREDIMED. I, I don't know, I don't remember now exactly you, the You numbers. need to eat more walnuts then. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I need the... Sorry, I need the California almond. <laughs> <laughs> what? Catalan? Uh, what? No, Catalan in, in uh. case the... You, you are talking about the number of... Yeah. Of, events. of events. How many events there were in, in the PREDIMED, approximately? So, so that, uh, are we seeing... One, 121 uh, uh, events, uh, I think, if I remember now. So... Uh, we, we have not powered, because when we uh, um, try, when we design the study, we have designed it as an endpoint, this uh, composite of endpoints. If not, we would need uh, a sample of, uh, I don't know, 12,000 <laughs> uh, um, 12, or the, to, um, sorry, a higher, uh, some, something that it was not possible to do. So in this case, we have uh, decided to, to that the endpoint would be a composite of endpoints, as as uh, uh, is also conducted in several clinical trials with uh, drugs, etc., in order to be feasible the study. So uh, th those things that are not significant, perhaps, is because of low power in order to find these results. In case of stroke, we have observed this. So in, in this case, we are sure that uh, these beneficial effects of a Mediterranean diet supplemented of nuts. But in the, in the rest of endpoints that we do not have significant beneficial effects, uh, is perhaps could be because of the low power. David. This is a fascinating debate. Um, can I perhaps try and link um, Jordi and Juan together? Um, am I right in thinking that we have less atrial fibrillation uh, basically in the PREDIMED on the nut study, on the nut arm? If we have less atrial fibrillation, then we may have less, less stroke. Uh, that, would, that would go together. <coughs> If we have less stroke, certainly many strokes, we may have better preservation of neurological function into older age group. And so this could make very good sense. And it could also explain why the small effects that we get in blood lipids and risk factors that we measure in terms of nuts in randomized control trials 
we've not shown it, but presumably there may be, there may be something in the clotting factor mechanisms that we perhaps haven't looked at that may be important here as a link. So we've got, we've got perhaps some anti-thrombotic effect, some, some sort of anti-arrhythmic effect, and this may together make a stroke effect and may, may prolong people like myself to have a better mind and clearer thinking, which I think Jim has just been commenting on. I won't say which way. <laughs> but does that make sense? Yes, yes, you are right. Uh, and in some cases, as you know, uh, observational studies, they observe the contrary that what is observed when we conduct a clinical trial. And this is also a reality. So uh, what it happens with uh, observational studies observational study or meta-analysis of observational studies has good evidence for science, but in order to conduct a clinical trial and to demonstrate with a clinical trial or more clinical trials, the evidence coming from observational studies. So, and in some cases, as you know, we do recommendations with only evidence coming from uh, observational studies, and this is a problem because perhaps we can do some recommendations that at the end are not uh, good for health. Pierre. Okay. Thank you very much. Pierre Bendix uh, Jefferson from Denmark. Uh, thank you for very nice presentations. And uh, in that regard, I just want to inform that in Denmark we have in fact just removed the taxes from lots of different kinds uh, due to uh, they have some behavior beneficial effect, so that's quite interesting, and also people are very happy for that, that they can buy them much cheaper now. Uh, I have another question, it's just uh, about the, uh, what, what, is the, what is the company that have these effects? Uh, is this the, the, the oils, or is this the phytochemicals that you find in, in, the, in the nuts? Uh, and also, uh, what happened about the preparation? If you're heating it up and so on, does it disappear again, the effect, or what? Do we have any knowledge about that? Um. I don't think there is a specific component from the nuts who is, which is the responsible of everything, you know. So, uh, in a separated uh, way, polyphenols has been associated with uh, a health improvement. Also, uh, some types of uh, fatty acids that nuts contain. So, uh, what we think is that probably is a combination of so it's a matrix, a specific matrix. So uh, we are talking about low glycemic index. We are talking about fiber content. We are talking about specific fatty acids and also uh, polyphenols. Um, I'm not sure if there is any uh, study trying to evaluate the, um, the, 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 I mean, how much uh, effect can have nut consumption uh, compared to uh, its components uh, by separate. This could be a good option to answer um, your questions. But I don't, I don't think there is any publication on that. I, I'm not sure, so I think it's not. I think Penny's group did some did, attempt did uh, to relate uh, some of the components, uh, especially on uh, intermediate outcomes, not. Uh, so I mean, trying to identify no, the, 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 the weight of each component on, on the final effect. I, I think, think it's think difficult so. to do it. <laughs> Yeah, and regarding the, the way you eat, um, there are some changes in a specific components when you roast, when you toast uh, nuts, uh, and of course if you eat uh, salted nuts, you know. But um, again, I think there are no studies comparing. Uh, there are? So, okay, so uh, no, I mean in, in, in health effects, not in a bromatological point of view. So, and did they found any significant differences? Probably, um, I expect to find uh, healthy properties in, in raw nuts instead of frosted nuts because you are uh, losing some components and changing some properties. But maybe <laughs> she can answer better than me. Uh, no, so, sorry. Uh, 
I was thinking I could catch you during coffee break. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Okay. We, everybody right, wants well, to know. Well, um, studies have been done looking specifically at almond types or almond uh, forms. And so there's whole almonds, roasted almonds, or even slivered almonds, and then ground almonds. And uh, they've been done by uh, David Baer Group at USDA. Um, looking at the calorie, the metabolizable energy, basically. And so that's one study. Another one that was done quite a while ago actually showed that because, um, and, and these two studies, basically, the results are linked, that because ground almonds are already processed, they're ground, all the lipids have been released, you do see a higher um, influence or rather impact on increase of HDL using ground almonds as compared to raw or roasted. So um, those two studies I can definitely provide. It's only a comment in relation to your first question. Why to analyze the beneficial effects of the component of, because at the end, the saturated fatty acid or the monounsaturated fatty acid that has uh, the, the hazelnuts uh, are the same as the monounsaturated fats that has the avocados or the olive oil. So at the end, uh, we have uh, uh, worked a lot in the last years in order to understand the beneficial effects of the nutrients separately. Now we know a lot in relation to this, but I think it's better to talk about uh, food and especially food patterns. Yeah, but probably the idea to find this um, beneficial effect of a specific component is thinking about uh, taking drugs. So thinking about taking a specific pill uh, full of, of plenty of this component, X component, and then to, to increase the, the, the healthy power. Dario. <coughs> Professor Jenkins already mentioned regarding um, antiarrhythmic effect. Maybe antiarrhythmic effect could be the answer. Possibly, but what about uh, hemodynamic effect and change in hemodynamics? Because it's relatively uh, a short period of time to, uh, to achieve a good um, prevention of cardiovascular disease. And you know that in MPAREG, it's still not uh, clear in MPAREG or LEADER trial or some SUSTAIN-6 or some other trials, but they, they uh, speculated with the uh, hemodynamic effect. I know it's the same, but just uh, as a comment. And uh, I will. The antithrombotic effect and uh, several other mechanisms, possible mechanisms explaining this. So we have a lot of data in order to explore possible mechanisms in the future. Uh, in case of PREDIMED, but also I think that we need more clinical trials in order to understand the mechanisms by yeah, the way trials. we can explain the, the results that we have observed in PREDIMED. And if I may take opportunity just What is important is that uh, if you analyze the, the curves, the uh, Alan Nelson curves or the kaplan Meyer curves of mortality and also stroke, we, we observe a divergence of the curves just at the beginning of the trial. So we, we, we observe some results that start just after a few time of uh, the intervention. Thank you very much, and I'll, okay. I'll take opportunity just for a last comment. I'm glad that uh, in this session, uh, three speakers were from, Cat uh, from uh, Catalans, and send our greetings to Professor Didac Maurizio. He is also very active in, uh, in, uh, as a Catalan speaker. And uh, I'll uh, take opportunity uh, just to mention why guy, uh, one uh, special person who is originally Croat, and I, I forgot to mention him because I was so excited because of football games here in Croatia. It's Professor Vlad Vuksan, and I, uh, I'm, I would like to express my gratitude to him because I was uh, in Toronto 2006 as a fellow of endocrinology, and I was there for several months. I learned a lot uh, about nutrition, and he introduced me to this group, uh, 2011 uh, or 12 in Greece, before that in Rome. So I have to take opportunity to express my gratitude to him. But I was so excited because of uh, opening session and also about our, uh, our uh, football games and results. So that was the reason why I forgot a uh, very special Croat from, uh, from Toronto as well. Thank you. Uh, and sorry, Dario. Uh, in, in two years, this symposium will take 
que en Reus o Barcelona, en Catalunya, és fortís de tu i que start... I don't know if we will arrive to the independence, but... But as a Croat, I can, I, I can ensure that we understand you and we support you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I, I would like to... Uh, we better end this session because it's coffee time. And uh, I would like to thank all the presenters. It was wonderful pre presentations, wonderful sessions. Thanks so much. Thank you.